The first one is external crystal form. By this we mean external shape of an individual crystal. And what looks outside is a direct reason behind how it is formed inside. We know everything is made up of atoms. And a group of atoms bonded together is called molecule. Therefore the internal arrangement of molecules of a crystal is the reason behind the external look of a crystal. The internal arrangement of molecules could be in the form of cubes, octahedrons, hexagonal prisms, etc. The second one is cleavage. When a crystal breaks, it happens due to fracturing or by cleaving. There will be a split along a smooth plane. And it occurs because of the structural weakness, meaning the internal molecular arrangement of that particular area of the crystal is weak and that causes a crack. The third property is fracture. Now fracture and cleaving is almost same, but the only difference is cleaving happens at a plane area of a crystal and fracture takes place in a non-plane area. Cleaving is a fine crack that is a smooth and almost a perfect crack, but a fracture is not a smooth one. It is rough and not uniform. Again, fracture also happens because of the structural weakness, meaning the internal molecular arrangement of that particular area of the crystal is weak and that causes a crack. The fourth one is luster. The meaning of the word luster is shine, bright or polished. Each mineral has a different luster, some are metallic, silky, then glossy, etc. It totally depends on the color of mineral. Because of the color, light is reflected from a mineral's external surface and that's what makes it sparkle. The fifth one is color. So how do we as human perceive color? How do we know it's blue, red, yellow, green, brown, black color? When different wavelengths of visible light falls on our eyes, that's how we see different colors. Now when light falls upon crystal of a mineral, some wavelengths are absorbed by the atoms of the crystal while others are reflected. Those ones which are reflected from the mineral surface, when they enter our eyes, that's how we perceive the color of a mineral. Now depending upon the molecular structure of the mineral's crystals, wavelengths of light is reflected accordingly. And that's how we find the color of a mineral to be white, green, red, yellow. The sixth one is streak. Now streak is the color of a mineral substance when it has been grounded to a fine powder. So two minerals that have similar color on the outside may have different colors when they are powdered. For example, hematite and galena. We can easily get confused when we look at their color. It's gray color. However, hematite streak is blood red while galena streak is lead gray. The seventh property of a mineral is transparency. When a light ray passes through an object, it is called transparent. But if the light ray gets diffused, that is called translucent. And if the light ray does not pass at all through an object, it is called opaque. Therefore, some minerals are transparent while others are opaque or translucent. The degree of transparency usually depends on the thickness of the mineral. The eighth one is structure. Mineral crystals occur in various shapes and sizes. Again, we have read this. The structural shape and size of a mineral crystal is due to the internal arrangement of molecules, meaning how they are joined. And this is called the crystal lattice. The ninth property is hardness. Now hardness is one of the better properties of minerals to use for identifying a mineral. Hardness is a measure of the minerals resistance to scratching. The Mohs scale is a set of 10 minerals whose hardness is known. The softest mineral is talc, which has a Mohs scale rating of 1. Diamond is the hardest mineral and has a rating of 10. Softer minerals can be scratched by harder minerals because the forces that holds the crystals together are weaker and can be broken by harder minerals. The last property is specific gravity. Now specific gravity of a mineral is a comparison or ratio of the weight of the mineral to the weight of an equal volume of water. The weight of the equal volume of water is found by finding the difference between the weight of the mineral in air and the weight of the mineral in water. So these were some of the physical properties of a mineral. And I think I should have told you in the beginning as to why we need to know them. So let me just quickly answer that. The reason we need to know the physical properties or characteristics of a mineral is because when we study a particular mineral, we can use them to make products we use in our day-to-day -day life. Everything around us contains minerals, from buildings to roads, then food to water, everything has minerals. So that's why we need to study them.